Welcome to The Advocate on PLUS TV Africa, where your panelists discuss thought-provoking topics in an atmosphere of seriousness, decisiveness, and laughter. Here we call a speed a speed, and like we say here, no holds barred. Today, I'm advocating for the inclusion of people with disabilities in all walks of life. Raymond is here to tell us about Nigeria's elusive search for nationhood, and finally, Anyton is talking about the various social cultures in Nigeria. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Physical disability is not inability. James was physically impaired after a near fatal road accident. He has lived his life to the fullest capacity, living with the challenges of accessibility in a society that treats disabled people like third class citizens. It is reported that there are over 27 million Nigerians living with some form of disability with physical impairment coming in at the third most common disability. The World Health Organization's 2011 World Disability Report states that about 15% of Nigerian's population, or at least 27 million people, have a disability, and many of them face several human rights abuses, including stigma, discrimination, violence and lack of access to health care, housing and education. And even in 2021, this number has not changed much. As though this is not enough bias, they are unable to get into a building in most cities in the country, thereby limiting their quality of life. Now, on January 23rd, 2018, Nigerian President Mohamed Buhari signed into law the Disability Prohibition Act after years of advocacy and protests by advocacy group. Of note in the bill is that the act prohibits all forms of discrimination against people with disabilities. If an individual is found violating this law, he or she will pay a fine of 100,000 naira or a term of six months imprisonment. The law also imposes several penalties across other provisions of the law and covers for many areas of infringement, including authorization for buildings without disability access, 5% of employment opportunities going, should go to disabled people, ability to litigate against any discrimination, and Section 31 of the Act provides for the National Commission for Persons with Disabilities who will enforce and promote the rights of disabled people. It's pertinent to note that it has taken almost 20 years for this bill to be signed, and I dare say this gives an indication of how discriminatory we are, as though a disabled person is somewhat a lesser citizen. Bills and regulations are only the first step, but as a society and people, we must have a consciousness of how our ignorance and lackadaisical attitude limits a significant population of our country. When was the last time you hired or referred a disabled person for a job? How many disabled people work in your organization? Have you tried to go into a building and realize that there's no wheelchair ramp, disabled parking, lifts, toilets, or other facilities for such people? Disability should not be a limitation in this country. We need to make a leapfrog attempt to better support this demographic to unlock untapped potential in 15% of our population. <laughs> I must say, um, it is quite a touching topic you have picked on to talk about today. And I will be honest and confess that the general reaction and the feeling that comes up within me and I'm sure maybe a number of people is first of all to want to shy away from it yeah. to kind of recoil and the you know how we are quite religious as a people that oh no you know that sense of wanting it not to come near you but it's a topic and a conversation that is sensitive and urgent and a call to action because uh, with the line where you actually ask the question how many disabled people have been referred or even employed and i did a mental recap and i really can't recall working with any disabled person 
in a long time. Exactly. And this is a career that's probably spanned over 15 years. And I was like, wow, this is not really very encouraging. And I guess I dare say it's a good call to action for all of us to take note of as, as people. I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm sure maybe anyone had a different set of reactions <laughs> from my reaction, but I definitely oh, yeah, was yeah. quite, um, you know. <sighs> well, I couldn't have had, anybody should have a different um, reaction because um, the reality just stares at you in the face. Just like you started pointing out, the last line of the advocacy that, that was like a soul searching for each and every one of us out there. When was mm -hmm. the last time you hired mm -hmm. someone or why you refer someone who is disabled to any organization? Mm -hmm. So that speaks to our collective responsibility in this social um, minutes, as it were. Mm. And this, the number she reeled out there, 25% of Nigerian population, that's... 15, yeah. Yeah, that means at least one out of every 10% is disabled in Nigeria. That's a lot. So that puts in context hmm. the number, the sheer number of this group of persons in this society. And yeah. we can't afford to actually um, not put, not, not um, factor the peculiarities of their condition yeah. in social planning. Mm. And everything yeah. in telecommunications. Even before the, I'll commend the president, the, the, the coming into, the, the signing into law of the um, disability uh, legislation. It's actually a step in, pro, in progress after a long time where this group of persons have been limited to just advocating within their perhaps small, smaller groups. Uh, that legislation for the first time has put that issue as um, in the front burner of mm -hmm. national mm -hmm. conversation. Mm -hmm. And also, I like to point out that. In recent times, I, I begin to notice some form of institutional um, concern True, around right. people who are disabled. Mm -hmm. uh, a case in point is this. Um, recently, the Nigerian Bar Association at the last NEC meeting, the MBA president, Mr. Olubi Dakpata, created a, a whole forum for disabled persons. That's, fantastic. That's interesting. Yeah. That's fantastic. Sections of persons mm -hmm. with disabilities. True. And it's within the legal profession. Mm. You know, it will cater to people in this group so mm. that you, they will organize for themselves and also mm. push uh, advocacy uh, to better make their, 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 their interest heard. And then also the Electoral Act that is being proposed to resign, to resign law any, any day has also made provision for uh, persons living with disabilities in polling centers, wards and coalition centers. So uh, I'm beginning to see a kind of institutional awareness uh, about the plight of this category of persons in uh, society. But like I pointed out, the conversation will continue. And on our own part, we have to do our own uh, uh, part of the job by actually um, going out of the way to make deliberate steps towards um, advising organizations. How about we employ someone who is disabled? You understand? So yes. we need two steps mm -hmm. go a long way. You know? mm -hmm. Yes. Creating that sense of inclusion which has been lacking for a long time. You know, this particular advocacy for me, right, it's, it's, it, it's more, it, for me, I want the burden to be on us. Mm. I want it to be on us. We have a mm. lot of rules and regulations in mm -hmm. this country, but it all comes down to enforcement. Yeah. But the truth is that there's a role of the government in nation building, right? And then there's a role of citizens. Mm. If we look at a certain 15% of the demographic and we say, oh, because the person is on a wheelchair, mm. then suddenly we forget the person's intellect. We That's forget true. the person's ability to contribute mm. intelligently to conversations. Mm and mm -hmm. to projects. Yes, I know that there are limitations on, of working in specific roles by virtue of their disability. However, what about everything except the actual physical activity? Mm. Yeah. A lot of value comes from the strategy point of view, from the planning point of view. Execution is last mile, really. So there's no reason why organizations shouldn't start to employ people like that. I don't remember working with any disabled person. And for me, it's, 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 I'm like, why? I know people that you know, are on a wheelchair and they are smarter than most people that I know. When you engage them in conversations, they have phenomenal ideas, yeah. but these doors have just been shut to them. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And so this particular advocacy, it's on us. We need to start to have, you know, we can't continue to pretend that it doesn't exist yeah. until sure it comes that. close to us. Maybe yeah. somebody in our family and then suddenly we mm. get angry, right? Yeah. This whole, the whole purpose of this is that we are looking out for each other as citizens of this country. The government is not going to do anything for us. And this one, the government has nothing to do with it. Sure. You're yeah, right. You're right about that. Yeah. And I think really maybe one thing, one area that would really help is to actually remove the stigmatization. You know how it is that already people just feel like a person with a disability should be stigmatized. It's almost like, like there was something you said that struck at me, hit me, that 
the disability, physical disability, does not actually take away from their capacity yeah. or their thinking or their abilities to do things. Yeah. And the minute we can begin to push that as people and make it front burner, it might help with removing the stigma. Because I've come to realize in advocacy that sometimes if you're not able to sell the benefit or the value of something, advocating for it becomes slightly more difficult. Yeah. But just yeah. as you put it that way, it hit me that, you know what? They are actually smart. It's a physical disability, That's it. not a mental disability. Exactly. And it only prevents some activities like, okay, you know what, entering into a place. And good thing, technology, remote working, virtual working, those are all values that add to your intellectual space. The idea of the workplace. I'm telling you. So I think all disability advocates have a field day pushing for disabled people to be able to earn more in the workplace. Yeah, well, to just um, put in more context what you guys have said, of course, um, the point you made about that the fact of them being disabled does not take away their, um, their intellectual makeup. Yeah. Uh, there is this popular saying that disability is not inability. Yeah, true. We have seen that being uh, displayed in a very graphic way in the Paralympics. That yeah. very true. Yeah. Very true. Very yeah. true. Yeah. How they have with their disability and they're doing exploit. Yeah. Yeah. So that means um this group of persons uh, we are no better than them because for That's now true. we still have our limbs and whatever intact. Mm. We could also be like them the next moment. So it's always good to actually um put them in the front of us to share this course. You know the, I also now that you talked about you know limbs we, you know, what we can also even start to do is when organizations are talking about corporate social responsibility mm -hmm. and they have budgets, what about we even put this money towards, you know, provision of prosthetic limbs for people like this? Yeah, but well, you know, there are organizations that are doing that already. But those are NGOs, are they not? Well, true them? that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And so you talk about corporate, yeah. So yes. maybe, there, maybe that's a call to the corporate society yes. as well. That What are you doing with your CSR budget and your funding? Yes. 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 Good, 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 good idea. Good idea. Good conversation. Up next is Raymond. Stay with us.